Welcome to Weiss Software's Visual Cam NC video series. In this video, you will learn how to create a mill path from an existing board outline and add break tabs. Before you begin to add any NC data to your design, you need to have two items an NC layer and an NC tool list. First, make sure that you have an NC layer type assigned on which to place the mill data. You can either add the mill data to an existing NC drill layer or create a new NC layer. To create a new one, use the Setup Layers command. In the dialog, find an empty layer, type in a name such as NC Mill, then choose NC from the layer type pull down list. Click on the OK button to save your settings. The second item we need is a tool list that describes the tools to be used for our mill path. Use the Setup NC Tools command to verify or define your tools. See the video on NC Tool Lists for detailed instructions on creating a new list. For the purposes of this video, I have already set up the tool list. Click on the OK or Cancel button to continue. Once the NC layer and tool list are set up, we are ready to create the mill path. Use the Tools, NC, Create Path From menu command or the Create Mill From Data Toolbar button. In the dialog, select a destination NC layer on which to place the mill data. VisualCam will default to the first NC layer that it finds in the layer list. Use the pull down button to select the NC mill layer you just created. In the Tool text box, specify the number of the tool that you wish to use to create the mill data. In the Mode area, choose between one of the three options of how you want to select your existing data. Use Automatic Mode if you want to select a line segment and have the system locate all connected lines to form the entire mill path. When using automatic mode, set the max outline item gap value to specify the maximum amount of space that can exist between items and still be considered part of the same outline. Select interactive mode if you want to manually select multiple individual line segments that compose the mill path. Select manual mode if you want to select only one line segment to convert to a mill path. If your existing data has segmented arcs, and you want to create true mill arcs utilizing circular interpolation, we recommend you select the Convert Segmented Arcs to True Arcs command. Otherwise, any arcs will continue to be represented by linear mill segments. When the path is routed, it will go much slower because the router will pause at the beginning of each segment. If you select the Convert Segmented Arcs to True Arcs option, click the Arc Conversion Setup button to control how the arcs are created. In the Segmented to Real Arc Setup dialog, the minimum number of segments must be within a valid segmented arc, 3 to 100,000. The higher this number, the more accurate the system will be when selecting the arcs to process. Set the maximum length of a line segment to be considered part of an arc. Short segments can be present at the beginning and end of segmented arcs. This option specifies the maximum size of any short segments that might be found, which will be automatically appended to an arc. This is necessary because short segments can cause the arc finding algorithm to fail to find valid arcs due to insufficient precision. Length tolerance is used for variation of line segment lengths for segments inside a segmented arc, not including the first and last short segments. For the purpose of determining whether the segment belongs to an arc, set the angle tolerance. This is the maximum angle between a perpendicular line from the midpoint of a given line segment and the line from the midpoint of the same line segment to the center of the arc. Click OK to return to the Create Mill Path From dialog box. The Specify Compensation Side option allows you to add compensation to your mill path during creation. Without this option checked, the mill path will be created from the center line. With this option checked, the mill path is offset from the center line by the radius of the mill tool. Select either right or left compensation direction. 
Based on the side that you picked during the create process, the mill path will be reversed if needed so the specified compensation direction will be maintained. If your board has any slots or cutouts that are smaller than the diameter of the mill tool, the result would be a route that cuts out more than the defined width of the slot. If you select the Skip Slots Less Than Tool Size command, the router will skip the small slots. You can then use the interactive mode to create the mill path for these slots, as I will show you in a few minutes after we get done with this path. Select the Double Path option if you want the mill tool to route the same path twice. This can be used to clean any rough edges left behind from the first route, especially when routing flexible circuits. Changing the max outline item gap value is only available with the automatic mode option and controls the tolerance used when determining if two segment endpoints should be considered connected. If you want to define a plunge point that lies outside of the mill path, specify an angle and length for the plunge line. The plunge point will be based on these settings and the vertex you designate later as the starting point of the path. The angle is the deviation counterclockwise for positive angles, clockwise for negative angles, of the plunge line from the first segment of the mill path. The angle is limited to a range of plus or minus 135 degrees. Specify a value of zero for both options if you want the plunge point to be on the mill path at the starting point. An overshoot is similar to a plunge line in that it is used to create a smoother edge on the board except that it applies to the tool extraction point. The last segment of the mill path is extended so that the tool extracts at a location outside the board. If you want an overshoot, specify the overshoot length. Enter a value of zero if you do not want an overshoot. If the start and end points are on a corner and compensation is used, a gap may appear between the plunge and extraction points. The overshoot and plunge options are provided so that you can close this gap, but they must be used in an appropriate manner. The angle of the plunge is intended for situations where the start point is in the middle of an edge that you do not want to plunge into directly. A properly defined overshoot would close any gap in this case. If the start point is on a corner, the plunge angle should be zero so that compensation does not open a gap that the overshoot cannot close. Click on the OK button to accept your changes and start the command. If you selected Automatic or Manual mode, click on any location in the drawn data that you wish to convert to mill. The line segments are highlighted. If you selected Interactive mode, select each of the line segments that you wish to convert to mill. When you have completed your selections, press the N key on your keyboard. If you selected the Specify Compensation Direction option, you are prompted to select the offset direction. Click on the side of the mill path where you want the offset applied. In this example, click anywhere outside the selected data. Click on the starting point of the mill path. Visual Cam will snap to the nearest corner and your mill path is created. Note the symbols used to represent the plunge and extraction points. You can change the plunge point after the mill path has been created using the right-click menu on the mill path and selecting Set Plunge Point. To enable editing of the mill path, Compensation and Tab Expansion will be turned off temporarily while you make the change. Click OK in the dialog. You will be prompted to change Mill Path Plunge, pick Plunge Location. Click on the opposite corner on the mill path where you want the plunge point to move. To change any of the properties of this mill path, use the right-click Edit Properties command to change the tool, plunge details, overshoot length, and compensation. Make any changes and then click on the OK button to update the mill path. Now we will add mill paths for the two smaller slots using the interactive method. After choosing Interactive Mode in the dialog, select the two segments and the arc, and then press the N key on your keyboard to have Visual Cam accept your selections and start the command. When prompted, click to select the side and the plunge point. To add break tabs to the mill path, use the right-click menu and choose the Add Break Tab command. 
When prompted, click where you want the tabs added. If you want to move or delete the tabs after you have placed them, right-click on the Break tab and choose to move or delete the Break tab. If you have more than one Break tab defined, you can use the Edit NC Change Break tab command to change the type of Break tab to use. Now I will discuss how to create different Break tabs for your design. The Setup Break Tabs command is used to define any break tabs that you wish to use in your mill paths. If you frequently use the same tabs, you can save the tabs to a file for use on future jobs. If you plan to add a break tab to a compensated mill path, you should define the tab with the compensation in mind. For example, how you want the tab to appear after compensation has been applied. If you add a break tab to a mill path, then change the definition of that tab in the Setup Break Tabs dialog, any occurrences of the tab in your database will change to reflect the new definition. To change the appearance of an individual break tab, define a new tab, if an appropriate tab does not already exist, then use the Edit NC Change Break Tab command. To define a new break tab, select the Setup Break Tabs command. In the dialog, click on the Add Tab button. Specify a new tab name or keep the default name and click on OK. The tab now appears in the list box and is given some default properties. Click the plus button next to the tab name to see them. A preview of the tab appears to the right of the list. This preview changes as you define your tab so that you can achieve accurate results. There are five types of break tabs and the properties displayed depend upon the type. By default, the tab you added is a simple break. To change the type, click on Break to display the list of options from which to choose. Set the side field to the desired compensation of left or right. The Size field provides two options for non-stitched tabs and three for stitched tabs as follows. For Variable, the size of the tab is variable and set by the user when the tab is placed on a mill path. For Calculate, which is used for stitched tabs only, the size of the tab is determined by the other parameters that follow. For Edit, you enter the exact size of the tab to use. Number of perforations is the number of perforation holes to create. Perforation size is the diameter of the individual perforation holes. Perforation spacing is the edge-to-edge -edge distance between the holes themselves and from the mill path. Border offset is the distance from the outermost edge of the perforation holes to the border. If this number is negative, the perforations will be created outside the mill path, but inside the board. Exit entry length is the length of the legs. Exit entry angle is the angle of the legs relative to the mill path in degrees. This can be any value between negative 90 and 180. A negative value means that the legs cut into the board. Add additional tabs as desired. The Delete Tab button is used to delete a break tab definition. If you have added a break tab to a mill path, you will be asked if you want to delete all occurrences of the tab as well. If you do not want to delete all occurrences of the tab, you must first use the Edit NC Change Break Tab or the right-click menu command Change Break Tab to change the occurrences of the tab to a different one. Then you can delete the tab definition. If you do want to delete a break tab from a mill path, but not delete the tab definition, right-click on the tab and choose Delete Break Tab, or use the Edit NC Delete Break Tab command. When you are finished, you can save your tab definitions to a .tab file by clicking the Save Tabs button. This is not required to save the definitions for the current database, only if you wish to use them again on future databases in which case you would use the Load Tab button to load the predefined break tabs into your current working database. 
Click the OK or Cancel button to exit the dialog box. This completes the Creating Mill Paths from Existing Data video in Weiss Software's VisualCam NC video series.